Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rick Drucker, and I'm the Business Development Specialist for Lessman Industrial Hygiene and Safety Division, um, which is now a part of Kelly Industrial Automation, so that you'll be seeing our logos um, come, come at you both ways now. Just wanted to make everyone aware. Um, we really appreciate that you're uh, joining us for today's webinar discussing common challenges in wearable noise dosimetry and how to overcome them. Today's presentation will address the important questions of how will this help me or why should I care? In this 45 minute session, we will discuss how advancements in, dos in dosimeters can help improve time efficiencies, increase employee compliance, improve employee morale and decrease your costs. Today we're fortunate to have Jason Rutz and Komi Toviau from TSI Quest. Jason joined TSI in 2021 where he and his team continue to build on the trusted TSI reputation. He currently serves as a product manager for occupational health and safety instruments responsible for managing product launches and ongoing support. With more than 15 years of experience, Jason brings a robust technical product development background to all of our webinars. Comey is a product specialist for health and safety quest at TSI with six years of experience in electrical engineering and instrumentation. Comey is the technical subject matter expert for TSI's quest sound, heat, and environmental product portfolio, and his responsibilities spanned over product development and customer relations and satisfaction. Uh, please note that during the seminar, uh, we're muting everyone's microphones. So hopefully if you have any questions at all, please type them into the questions box um, on the GoToWeb toolbar, and we'll try to either weave them into the presentation or if easier, uh, we'll address them in the Q&A section at the end. With that, I'd like to welcome Jason and Comey and turn the floor over to them. Thank you, Rick. Um, yes, so today we'll be talking about solving common challenges in wearable noise dosimetry. So TSI, we've been in the noise dosimetry sound level meter space for, for many, many years now. Um, we're constantly evolving our products and, and trying to find solutions for customers. And today uh, we're hopeful that you'll come away from this with a better understanding of how to use uh, not just our tools, but noise dosimeters in general. and um, have some better clarity on how to address some of the common challenges that you're facing on a daily basis. So, so we're going to go through the common challenges. We'll talk about our TSI Quest Edge 7 and 8. Um, we'll talk about some of the key features that those tools have and how they address the common challenges that we discussed. And then we'll go over some of our DMS reporting software at the end to button things up a little bit. That I'll hand it over to Comey for the common challenges. Thank you, Jason. So, uh, it, it, you know, it's always important to to remind everybody, you know, why all of this matter in the first place, uh, because we've heard uh, all over the industry uh, about these challenges, uh, and it matters uh, addressing them, uh, starting with the fact that. Uh, all safety professionals, IHs or consultants, uh, hate <laughs> repeating studies, right? Having to repeat studies, whether it be to, uh, you know, uh, compare your study against a compliance standard uh, agency uh, is, is something that nobody wants to do, right? Because it, it relates to uh, uh, wasting time and resources and it's not productive. So making every study count by taking the same measurement, compare it against multiple agency standards really helps uh, with time and cost savings. Um, the other challenge that we, we hear a lot uh, is the, the, the lack of con contextual information or event identification. Uh, imagine in a, you know, uh, in a facility, a manufacturing facility where you have, you know, all things, you know, all kinds of things going on, right? Somebody drops a hammer, somebody, you know, slams a door shut, and you see these things in your data, in your report, and you, you don't really know what caused them, 
you 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 inclined to removing them from your chart, but you, you're not sure if you should, right? And all of this contributes to uh, unproductivity, and uh, you, you're you're sort of making decisions that are not quite backed by data. And I get questions like this all the time: Should I remove this? Should I not? Etc. Right? Uh, also, the incomplete uh, uh, or lack of relevant note taking, right? You, you're not just in charge of, uh, of noise sampling. In fact, you're in charge of safety. Uh, safety uh, is a loaded uh, uh, word or term in your industry, right? You're dealing with noise, or IAQ, you're dealing with, you know, heat stress or fall hazard, you know, all kinds of stuff. And when you take a noise sample today, a noise sample rather today, you, you may not get back to it until a week or a month later, right? And having a, a way or using tools that allow you to not rely solely on pen and paper really accelerate your productivity. Uh, employee uh, uh, privacy. Uh, two days ago, I got a, uh, an email from uh, uh, from an IH who whose company's HR was was asking about uh, uh, dosimeters recording, you know, voices of workers, and I've personally. Uh, have to explain to workers that I put the simulators on that this is not to record your voices, right? And and when you are able to get through those, you know, employee uh, privacy, uh, you you uh, employee employees like you know tend to trust you more, right? And increases employee morale, etc. And all of you know that your business uh, has about 50% of the time you're dealing with people, right? And when you have them on your side, it's a, it's a great day. Uh, still on the common challenges list, you have the, you know, the inability to determine uh, appropriate health, you know, risks and protection, uh, limited to uh, limited com uh, compatibilities of certain noise events and exposure, right? Uh, when you're not able to cater to the employee uh, as far as their personal health risk exposure uh, it's it's not it's not very productive right when you do a a solution that is based on you know uh, uh, one size fits all right that is not really uh, personalized protection right uh, how do you interpret interpret you know peak levels in your in your uh, in your uh, noise sampling uh, and how do you go about uh, maybe removing those or maybe leaving them in to account for those in your hearing protection programs, right? Those are common challenges that really affect uh, your day-to-day -day and your uh, productivity, right? Uh, and sometimes worker may not even know uh, if they are going to exceed their dose level by the end of the shift. Because remember, usually when you collect noise sample, you're, the, the action is taken after, right? When you do heat stress, it's uh, right then and then, right? When you hit a, you know, a certain threshold, well, you gotta take a break, gotta take water. But when it comes to noise, you, you want to study the noise environment, you know, dress a report and then, you know, put in a, a program, et cetera. You never really know uh, what's going to happen four hours in, what's gonna happen at the end of the shift. And there are tools nowadays that can sort of help you predict that. So you can supplement more hearing protect, protection uh, or PPE to that particular employee, right? So uh, in the next few slides, we're going to go over things that you can do uh, to sort of uh, uh, address these challenges specifically. Jason? All right, yeah, so today, just to give you a quick uh, quick idea of the, tool that we'll, the tools that we'll be talking about that have these key features and solve for these common challenges, uh, I just wanted to quickly introduce you all to the Edge 7 and 8 dosimeters. So this is the latest uh, Quest Edge dosimeters that TSI has released. Um, they come standard with an incredibly powerful suite of tools uh, that uh, um, you know are better than most industry standards out there. So uh, these things will ultimately make your job easier, and we're just going to dive right in and and get to to how that works. So one of the common challenges that that Comey talked about was just the frustration of dealing with multiple studies and how that how that uh, can be managed and save you time, right? So, you know, with with dosimeters, many dosimeters out there today, you can run multiple studies, OSHA PEL, OSHA HC, ACGIH, and, and custom, so that you can monitor up against four different standards simultaneously. So the custom study, it really gives the administrator the ability to run tests outside of established standards. 
measure against you know company or location specific requirements. Right? So for example, we heard that some companies specify parameters below um, any of one of the above noted standards, OSHAs or ACGIH. Um, you know, these companies might specify these lower standards to uh, ensure the health or health of their uh, uh, workforce, uh, you know, below a standard so they don't get close to that risk level, right? Um, another thing to note is there's other standards um, out there that are established other than these large or large three OSHA and ACGIH ones that you often come across. There's things such as ISO and MSHA. So you can um, take your custom settings in, in our DMS software, you can put those MSHA settings in, you can name that custom um, setting MSHA and it'll save it. So if you're going into different locations in, in mining, for example, you will be able to save those standards and use them repeatedly without having to go through the process of building that custom standard every single time. Uh, the next on the on the list of uh, things you can do to address challenges is uh, the ability to use voice notes, right? And and really, what voice notes allows you to do is to record your own voice uh, or of locations uh, or you know the the subject's name that the person you're sampling, the reason why you're sampling, uh, or even sometimes when you're sort of uh, uh, in, in between breaks, right? You can. You can record these voice memos to remind yourself of, of what happened. There are things that you know pen and paper cannot really uh, relate in details, um, uh, but voice memos uh, or voice notes uh, allow you to to do such a thing. And the and the the, the really the nice thing about having a, an instrument that allows you these things is that it it, it directly translates into the chart. So I see a gap into my data. And I just happened to have recorded a voice memo there. When I go and listen to it, I sort of remind myself of what happened, uh, or at the beginning of a study, or at the end of a study, and that kind of thing, right? So, uh, voice note is really something that you can use to that advantage. Now, uh, thinking about or addressing the the privacy uh, a part of voice memos is that, you know, this is really a sensible uh, feature where you know by default it has to, it must be uh, enabled in the software, meaning by default, it is disabled, right? User has to go into the software to enable this feature. And it, it, you can only access the voice note by physically pressing a button on the unit to record the, the voice. So you wouldn't accidentally record your own voice unless you intend to, right? So, so that, that, those are a few guardrails to address the privacy concerns when, when it comes to voice voice notes. Yeah, so you know, somewhat complementary to voice notes is audio event recording. So earlier in some of the problems we talked about, you know, having to carry around a notepad or getting um, spare information within your study that you're not quite sure what happened, right? And, and, and in the past or in the current state for a lot of folks, they have to go back and sometimes reconduct the study because they're unable to identify what caused that audio event or what was the source of it, right? So um, what we have at our tool is, is a configurable audio event recording. So you can go into the software, you can configure what decibel level uh, you want that audio event recording to start, right? So this is reviewable and timestamp, excuse me, your timestamp data as well, right? So um, you can go back, you can see where the peak was. You can actually hit play on that audio event and you can hear what it was. It might be a garage door slamming, an airplane passing by, right? You pair that up with voice notes. Oftentimes you can have an audio event happen. And if you remember, you can go to voice notes and say, hey, that was garage door slamming, for example. And that allows you to more quickly um, vet out um, the good and the bad from your voice from your study at the end, right? So you can quickly uh, provide that information in your reports. Um, <clears throat> so um, again, it also, like I said, it just really eliminates the need for manually cataloging specific noise events. And you know, if, if you don't have to carry a notebook around and constantly keep track of everything, it's just less cumbersome. And in a lot of cases too, many of you folks are out there with you know noise dosimeters on four, five, six different people at a given time. You can't be on everyone's shoulder at all times. So it really, really streamlines things from that from that front as well. 
and, and and the next one here, you know, really to again to address the the, the challenges, and you you can already see how all of these kind of tie together uh, in a way that they're you know they're not just sort of a uh, uh, one feature you might use, you know, a standalone sort of feature you might use, but sort of something you can use in conjunction. You can use all of these. Let's say you have a a site uh, uh, that uh, you are you know collecting samples at. Uh, you record a voice memo, as we mentioned. Um, then all of a sudden, uh, there's an event that happened, which you can set thresholds for when you want the instrument to capture the event, the actual noise event. And that also happened; they captured it for you. And then all of a sudden, you you kind of you you need to take a break, and you don't want to keep recording data uh, while the employees are on a break. So you go ahead and you you, you pause the study. Uh, which you make a voice memo uh, when you pause or before you pause to say, well, uh, we're going on a break and I'm pausing the study. And when you resume the study, you play and then you make another voice memo just to sort of make your life easier whenever you get back to this file, right? So pause study uh, being su such a simple feature uh, but really plays a big role in not having multiple files to go through for the same study or the same session right all right so ceiling counts another really cool feature so um um usually maybe only be exposed to peak levels when they're working on a specific piece of machinery or in a certain area right so the administrator could use the ceiling exceedance calculation uh, which will offer guidance on additional controls, such as you know additional hearing protection that might need to be implemented during that particular task or while working in a certain area. Um, this could be used in conjunction with automated uh, event recording and, and voice notes as well. Um, so really now you have a trifecta of information coming together to really tell you what's happening, what the risk level is, and, and and maybe a voice or maybe an actual audio recording of the event if your decibel levels are set correctly. So this is also one of the reasons I think this is really cool is because a lot of times citations are issued on on the frequency of peak events that happen in a given area. So you can go in ahead of time with this feature in conjunction with the other features and understand the frequency in which those ceiling count thresholds are exceeded and you can avoid those citations and ultimate fines by putting the controls in place ahead of any sort of uh, uh, enforcement action that might be coming in. And, and, and again, you know, before we move on, you know, just a quick note on the, on the ceiling con aspect, and that ties back to privacy concerns. Uh, you know, Jason elegantly uh, said what uh, the ceiling count really gives you, but uh, because of privacy concerns and, and sites that don't allow things like automatic event recording, for example, selling count happens to be a tool uh, or a feature that allows you to set a threshold and say, hey, when my nose level reaches this threshold and lasts, right, and stays there for 15 or 20 seconds, count it, notify me that this happened, right? so that uh, I can turn off my audio recording or event recording feature for privacy reasons, but at least I get the ceiling count uh, information uh, uh, without the audio, of course, right? But at least I get the ceiling count information to, to help me uh, with my, my data processing or analysis, right? So uh, just, a, just an added benefit there for, for using ceiling count uh, in place of, um, the uh, audio recording, uh, for example. Great point. Yes, it gives some great flexibility on that front. Exactly. Um, and then this this is a this is a great one, and this is one that uh, grabs a, a lot of people's attention. This is my uh, you know one of my favorites is the uh, octave band. And no, number one question uh, by far that that I get uh, from uh, from IHOs is why do I need an octave band on a dosimeter, right? And, and the answer to that is straightforward. Uh, it is for personalized protection, right? The, the octave band analysis on a dosimeter is for personalized protection. 
because when you take a broadband data, which is a uh, noise signal without frequency, right? Meaning noise signal without octave band, uh, all you're doing is sort of measuring the exposure level, right? Which, you know, OSHA, rec OSHA recommend as soon as you hit 85, you, uh, you hit uh, hearing conservation and, and so forth. Uh, but what do you do after that, right? You have to go through injury controls, uh, elimination, administration control, uh, and PPE should be the last resort, which in most cases, after you've done everything else you have to do, you still need some PPE. And that's where Active Band comes in. Because as you go and choose that PPE, what are you looking at? What data are you actually looking at? Well, you can look at a couple of things. You can look at the uh, NRR, the noise reduction uh, 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 rating, on the label of that PPE, uh, the hearing protector device, uh, and just use the OSHA formula to, to, do, to de determine your attenuation level. Uh, or you can use a better methodology uh, by OSHA standards, which is doing what we call the C minus A, uh, or high, medium, low uh, method, or better yet, an even better method to use would be using active band. Why is that? When you look at the hearing protector data sheet, what you usually or oftentimes realize is they don't just give you the NRR or SNR if, 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 if this is a, a European manufacturer. They also give you uh, the, the attenuation of that hearing protector by frequency. So at each frequency, you get to see the attenuation uh, from the manufacturer. Now imagine having that data along with the data that you gathered from the employee because they're moving oftentimes or even if they're stationary, that's their accumulation by frequency. And you can use those two to determine whether or not the hearing protector would provide sufficient attenuation for their hearing, right? So you don't want to uh, underprotect, but there is also something called the overprotection of, of people, right? You don't want to overprotect your employees. You want them to be able to hear a backup, you know, truck, you know, you know those kind of warning buzz, you know, noises. You want them to hear somebody uh, uh, yelling and calling for for safety reason. You want them to hear certain things. Uh, so overprotection is a real thing, and active band analysis data allows you to really cater to that employee. As, uh, as it relates to their their hearing uh, um, pr protection, right? Um, so uh, you can tell I'm really I'm really excited about Active Band and uh, and uh, yeah. The next one on this would be PDOS. Uh, this is a, this is really uh, a, another one that that uh, I'm grateful for because again, when you do noise sampling, uh, oftentimes you you give the the simulator, you put the, the simulator on somebody, and then you just kind of let the course, you know, let the, the let it run its course until you collect the data, or maybe you know if you have a you know uh, a Bluetooth instrument, you can use an app, you know, HDB app to kind of see the data right from uh, from uh, from that employee and maybe supplement extra hearing protector. But you can do one better, which means that you can see ahead of time if you're going to hit that 100% dose, right? So, and, that, and that's what the PDOS calculation gives you. So, I'm three, four hours in my, you know, my work shift. Um, my current dose is X percentage. Well, PDOS is, is telling me, well, if you keep going at this pace, you know, assuming noise levels are const remain constant throughout the rest of the shift, you're going to hit, let's call it 110, right, at the end of the shift, uh, which you don't want, right? Um, so at, at that point, you might say, well, okay, well, I'm going to remove this employee for, for an hour or two and have them do something else. Or if you don't have, you know, uh, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 flexibility to do so, 
uh, well, you might just try something else. You might say, well, I'm going to watch it closely and then maybe supplement some hearing protector and then uh, and then and then revise later, right? So PDOS really helps you uh, uh, make that work shift count, yeah, <laughs> so that people don't just get overexposed just because we don't have a proper uh, data or proper process in place to protect them yet, right? What I also like about the uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now, the projected calculator uh, panel, is that uh, a question comes up and it's, you know, somebody says, well, I, I've recorded eight hours of data and, and really um, the, the, my shift last, you know, lasted 12 hours. Uh, how can I sort of uh, uh, estimate, because uh, OSHA, OSHA would allow you to estimate the 12 hour uh, from the eight, uh, how can I do that? Again, assuming that uh, nothing really drastic happened uh, in that extra uh, 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 time, uh, four hour time period, you can estimate the dose for 12 hours considering what happened with the eight hour um, uh, uh, noise data, right? You can also do uh, uh, a projected calculation to say, well, we, we want to move the, you know, this employee from a, an eight to 12 hour shift. Uh, can, they, can, can we do that? Uh, or, or would they be overexposed if we do that, right? So you can sort of do some simulations with the time you want people to be at certain locations um, before you can actually go and implement them. I imagine going to your employer and say, hey, you know, uh, we're going, uh, we have a solution for this. Uh, we're going to, you know, shift, shift the employees from here to here to here. Uh, and you do all that, but it doesn't work, right? You've wasted time, you've wasted resources uh, because there's a million ways you can solve these problems. You just want to figure out the right way fast, right? And, and PDOS is one of those tools that, that allow you to, uh, to, to achieve that. Now, we, we said all these things and we, we will not be uh, doing service uh, to uh, addressing these challenges without mentioning the software uh, tools available. Now, I, I wanna start first with the, uh, the, the app, the Bluetooth app, right? Called Edge DB. Now, uh, what I like about the app is not just sort of a, you know, a fancy sort of tool that you know you can sit here and read data from somebody's shoulder but really if you think about it um, going into a facility where somebody's probably let's say a worker is wearing a, a, a bunch of ppe plus the dosimeter you give them now to read the data on their shoulder you have to first put on some ppe possibly get in that zone tap their shoulder interrupt what they're doing just to check their dose and if they're okay, you don't you don't take any action, right? Again, the the, the relationship with the people uh, doesn't go very well when you keep doing that. And and in in, in some you know customers have, have found a real benefit from using Bluetooth, which means I might not even uh, have to put on some PPE. I can just get into a safe distance from the worker, check their Bluetooth level, the uh, their dose level. And then if they need to supplement hearing protector, then I grab the hearing protector, tap their shoulder, then I'm tapping their shoulder, interrupting them to give them something instead of just you know, doing it for the sake of checking their measurement, right? Um, so that, that, that's where it really comes in handy. And, and really this also ties into the uh, uh, intrinsically safe versus non-intrinsically safe aspect of, of it all. Right, uh, this feature is you know is even more important when you're dealing with intrinsically safety uh, 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 areas, right? Because that requires more protection and and less flexibility into interrupting people uh, or, or that nature. Now, speaking of intrinsically safety, and anyway, we'll get into that again a little bit more. But the you might have noticed a color difference between the you know the blue and the and the orange. Uh, and really the orange is to signify intrinsically safety so that people can recognize it from a distance, right? Uh, uh, because if you have a fleet of these instruments, uh, you're a consultant that rents these from, from, from companies or a company that rent these out, uh, you really you have really to be careful uh, uh, that the right instrument is being rented out and so forth. So the 
color difference is a real uh, differentiator of this is the safe instrument, this is the standard instrument for the standard environment, right? Now, on the software uh, side of things, the exciting thing about the software is that the, uh, the DMS software, which works with the Quest portfolio, uh, is the same uh, software compatible with the uh, new dissimilators, right? And with the added features like the voice note, all the screenshots that, uh, uh, that you saw earlier are directly from the DMS software. Um, and, uh, and that's something that a lot of uh, customers uh, appreciate uh, because they don't have to relearn a new tool, right? Now, how does you know, all of this you know, help me is, is, is a question some of you might, might have in, in mind uh, as we go through uh, all of this and and the answer is simple right uh, the, the the hierarchy of control is something that all of you are familiar with uh, this is uh something you recite in your you know you can recite in your in your sleep uh because it, it really provides you uh step by step uh how to deal with any uh hazard regardless you know uh, doesn't just apply to noise right and you know that um having an instrument that you can use throughout this whole process from elimination substitution injury control uh you know uh, administrative control uh, how to change the way people work you know think the the pedos calculator for example before you go to your employer or the client and say this is what we need to do and this is what the data shows right and have confidence in submitting that report uh, an instrument that works al alongside you uh, to do all of that accelerates your productivity, which the more productive you are, if you're a consultant, the more revenue you bring in. If you're an IH working for a company, the safer, the faster people get safe, safe, right? So so it really comes down to that um, in the end. Um, now, Jason is going to go through uh, some of the other uh, key uh, features uh, on, the, on the IS versus the non-IS models. Yes, thank you. So as we discussed, uh, you know, we have the Edge 7 and the Edge 8. Edge 7 being the non-IS or non-intrinsically safe, and Edge 8 being the intrinsically safe model. So one really cool thing about the Edge uh, dosimeters is that all the features we talked about today, including everything else you see up there, is, is included right so a lot of other industry leaders it's not available or it's an upgrade feature or cost right so you have a scalable tier one tier two tier three type dosimeter selection that you need to make um so the one-to-one -one octave band the auto recording voice memos pause configurable ceiling counts all of that is included on both devices ble5 bluetooth availability so your range is quite long very important uh, particularly in that intrinsic safe environment when you want to read what's going on without having to put on additional PPE. Um, the iPhone uh, the Android app uh, on the uh, Edge DB app, excuse me, uh, is, is super helpful for that. So um, additionally, um, you know, we do three and five year service plans on these products. So um, you can have worry free use of these units for, for many years to come. So. Yep. Uh, really cool uh, feature set with these products. We're really proud of it. And um, with that, I guess we'll open it up yeah. for questions. What, yeah. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say before we go to questions, sure. uh, uh, yeah, is that the, the Bluetooth piece of of the of the whole Edge Seven Eight, uh, when when we say non Bluetooth, for example, versus Bluetooth, oh, sure. is it, it means that the non Bluetooth instruments do not have the Bluetooth chip on them. Right. And that may not sound like anything, but when you deal with government uh, uh, agencies or government or secure facilities, uh, oftentimes a lot of them do not even want the Bluetooth chip on the unit. Not just that it's disabled, right? The Duplo chip is not existent on the unit. And, and that's really what we're talking about here when we say uh, Bluetooth versus non-Bluetooth instruments. Right? Yeah, that's, very, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So doesn't happen very often but when it is needed it's it's really needed yes uh, yes. So, yes uh or yes. not needed i guess in this case yes exactly <laughs> so yeah well, so when you rent these out for for example which I, i'm sure a lot of you do 
uh, it's nice to have that sort of option where uh, I want today I want a Bluetooth uh, uh, instrument tomorrow I want a non a real non Bluetooth instrument mm -hmm. that do not that does not even have the chip on it mm -hmm. right so yeah I guess with that we can uh, go to the uh, <laughs> questions okay um, so the first question that um, we've uh, we've got here guys is if you can talk a little bit about the MEMS microphone what's different about it from the old one um, what are the advantages again you know sticking to our theme how will this help me and why should I care about it right you know that's, that's a very good question so uh, and I'm going to start first by by talking about what was and you know when it comes to microphones, uh, especially as it relates to the uh, Edge 5, uh, which I'm sure uh, our audience is here is familiar with. Uh, the, the thing with the Edge 5s was that the microphone was, number one, it was a quarter inch microphone. Uh, not only that, the, the top part of the microphone was uh, threaded. So, and also the windscreen was was also threaded. So when, when customers would, uh, calibrate their instrument, uh, you know, pre-calibration and, and post-calibration. They would unthread uh, the, the windscreen and also the top of that microphone by accident, and that resulted in a lot of uh, frustration and, and microphone that got that get, that got damaged. Um, so with the MEMS microphones are uh, more robust. Uh, they are a half-inch microphone. They're more robust and the um, they are made to not go through the same uh, or not have the same, you know, if you want to call it uh, 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 flaw of not being, uh, um, of being unthreaded um, that the Edge 5 had, right? So, uh, so that's the main differentiator between the two. So better performance, more robust, um, and the reduced accidental damage that we have with the Edge 5s. Thank you. Um, another question um, is is more a confirmation. Um, is the actual user of the is the employee the wearer of the instrument able to leave a voice note? And um, I, we know that you've addressed it. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. It's simply by um, first of all being programmed. Um, through the software to allow it, and then it, the employee would literally just push a button, um, and while that button is being held down, he would be able to record his voice. Um, yes, you're, yep, you're correct, Rick. So it has to be enabled in the DMS software, first of all, and it can be disabled because, as we talked about earlier, there's some security concerns at different facilities. But yes, it's, it works much like a walkie-talkie in that regard, and you have to hold down the button to record the voice down. So there is some coaching that needs to happen to the user if they're walking around with this. Hey, if something loud happens or whatever, just leave a voice note. You, you know, voice notes are just going to leave a a, a timestamp data point on your study. So if somebody leaves erroneous voice notes that don't necessarily need to be there, it's not that big of a deal. You can listen to it. You can see that maybe something big didn't happen. But if something big did happen, that voice note becomes a lot more critical. And again, as far as the privacy concern, yes, that button has to be pushed. Um, it's not going to pick up voice or record your voice as you're going throughout. Um, um, so on that note, actually, so, you know, we talked about audio event recording and setting that decibel threshold. That decibel threshold has to be maintained for a period of time. And usually that decibel threshold is going to be set at above 90 dBs, right? Um, the odds of somebody talking at that loud for a sustained period of time and then continuing to talk for that loud after it activates that that threshold um i've been always told i'm a loud talker but i can't do it so um it's, and you'd want to know and you'd want to know why someone was yelling that loud for that long well yeah. actually yes actually that would be some sort of concerning event in my opinion yes, yes. <laughs> but, yes. Um, but yes. re related to this, um, if a recorded event is determined not to be applicable to the exposure potential, can it be deleted from the data 
and will that in turn update the calculation, you know, the calculated TWA, et cetera? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, this is something that our customers have always uh, been doing, right? You go to the data chart, I mean, the data file, you open the chart, and then you use the tool that we call the, uh, we call it chart recalcul recalculation tool that allows you to select a portion of the chart, right? And and include that portion into your data, into your calculation. So it recalculates your TWA or dose based off of the the area of the chart that you you selected, right? So they, you know, our customers used to do this, uh, but but now they can do it because they are sure that oh that peak or this event or that was caused by this type of noise event they, they can actually listen to it so it brings you know more light to uh to that uh, uh to that type of tool and uh, uh yeah that's a great question um the other side of that question i've got one that says should a user forget to pause a study as he went into break or whatever other reason he may have to pause it um can this section, um, can this data be um, added later for a pause? I mean, if you remember, oh, I forgot to do this. Can you go in and add that into the software? Yeah. So, so I, uh, so I had two answers, right? Two, two methods, if you will, to, to include uh, or to remove a a break period uh, from uh, your study. Well, number one, you can use the chart uh, recalculation uh, tool to select the areas that you want to include, except for the time you wish you paused, because it's a you know it's a timestamp data data chart. So you would know the time that you wanted to pause but you didn't. So you would select uh, the uh, the rest of the chart and calculate it that way, uh, or you could use the depending on you know where the pause you know is is located, uh, or you could use the uh, uh, the projected uh, time calculator. Uh, that that also can allow you to uh, uh, just pick the time of the recording without the the area uh, uh, of the pause. For for example, if you if the pause or the stop. Uh, was at the end of the study, let's say you recorded for longer than you intended to, uh, in most cases, you would just go and take the, let's say the dose, for example, the dose eight, right? Uh, and it, it'll just do the math according to the eight hour that you uh, you spent. Um, uh, so depending on where that pause is located, you would use either or methods. But the best, most accurate way to, redo the calculation is to select the area of the map you wish to include into the data. Okay, um, sticking on this um, note, um, can an audio file or voice note be deleted completely? Um, so DMS is a computer-based software uh, that does not talk to the cloud, and a, a, a every data, all the data that you record and download to DMS uh, resides on the software only. I mean, on your computer, right? Um, uh, only. Now, uh, deleting voice notes. Let's say, uh, and I'm assuming that this question is coming from. Uh, I saw the little dots on the chart. But let's say I don't want to see them. I don't want to look at them. I don't. I don't want to print my report with those little dots. You can remove those dots without actually deleting the the audio, right? Now, because all the files and all the audios reside on your computer, uh, you can uh, 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 find those files uh, on your C drive on your computer as well. Uh, customers sometimes ask, uh, you know, I, I need the, the actual audio file because I want to, I don't know, ar archive it somewhere. Uh, so you can do that too. But, uh, you know, deleting uh, audios, I'm assuming is, uh, you know, uh, 
the, the person is probably trying to remove the dots, in which case you can deactivate the dots easily. Um, Was that the premise for the question, Rick, or are they asking if you can permanently delete any record of the actual audio file? Um, the question simply asks if the voice note can be deleted. So I'm yes. assuming, let's just say some employee says, you know, such and such happened and that, you know, was an incorrect statement and didn't want to have that on there. Can you just take that yeah. note off? Yeah. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you can, let, let's say, uh, you know, an employee recorded something uh, and you, you know, you wanted to delete it because it was inaccurate or something. Uh, you can either use a a, uh, a comment box on the chart uh, and place a comment on that dot and say, well, you know, ignore, uh, disregard this, you know, uh, uh, audio uh, just for yourself so you can sort of get back to it. But uh, uh, you if you wish to remove entirely the audio, uh, the audios are all on your computer, on your C drive. So you can remove the audios, you know, uh, copy them on your, you know, on, on a different computer, on a flash drive, whatever. But uh, uh, there are ways you can achieve what you're trying to achieve uh, without necessarily deleting uh, the, the file, whether it be just making the display not appear on the charts, or completely removing it from the C drive. Yes, it's possible. Yes. Okay. Um, moving on, can the dosimeter be paused or activated remotely using Bluetooth? Yes. Uh, yes, it can. Uh, the Bluetooth app. Uh, the D Edge DB app, it's called Edge DB, uh, iOS and, and, and Android, uh, you can start, pause, and stop a study uh, within that Bluetooth range uh, uh, as, as the dosimeter is still on the worker's shoulder, right? So you don't have to get in their space to do that. Yes. Okay. Um, can the IH, is the IH notified if the instrument is stopped or had failed? So uh, the no, the answer is no. So uh, you can place a security feature on the dosimeter uh, so that all the keys, all the all the keypad is locked down. So uh, a, you cannot accidentally turn it off uh, for that reason. Um, so you know to prevent that kind of scenario, right? Uh, you can actually do it in such a way that even the screen is is off so you can see the screen on but the displays or the data it will be off uh as a, also as a security uh a feature uh, to avoid uh accidental uh turning off the the instrument okay um for those that still have um the older edge fours or edge fives will this software work you know if they also had the sevens or eights yes yes absolutely uh, that, that's the great advantage of the seven eight uh although i'll say if you do have the uh another uh you know edge five or four uh you you will need to go to tsi.com uh, and go to the uh, software wizard page to update uh, your software, right? You can update your software. Uh, and that's because with the octave band and all the voice and audio, uh, there's a, uh, an, an, a little update that needs to be, uh, to be done to account for, for, for those. But yes. And then it'll, and then it'll store user experience. that along with whatever other TSI products um, are available. Yes. Yes, with the uh, EVM sevens, with the QT Quest amps, and uh, all the UI is the same. You would hardly notice uh, this is a new software uh, update. It's uh, it's kept intact. Okay. 
Um, I can answer this one for you. No, the um, cradles for the seven and eight will not work with the cradles for the four and the five. Correct. Yeah, they would yeah. not work uh, again uh, with the uh, 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 octave band requirements and all the uh, 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 energy battery requirements and all uh, the uh, seven eight come with a new cradle. Okay. Um, and um, will they work with your AC three hundred calibrators and competitive calibrators? So they would work with the AC three hundred calibrator. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a a Casella, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this CEL one twenty. Uh, I think uh, it is. Uh, you can also use it with it because it's been tested with it, right? That that's the reason why right? it's been tested with it. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't use any other calibrator on it. So the the Edge Seven Eight will both come with an adapter. So as, as coming out of earlier, there's a more robust. Jason, microphone. you're kind of talking soft there. Can you speak up just a bit? I said so. Uh, these units will also come with uh, an adapter for the calibrator. So as coming out of earlier, there's a more robust, larger microphone on these new units so uh it'll have a little adapter that you can use your old uh, uh existing calibrators with uh, and allow you to uh quickly um get all your calibrations out in the field okay just a little plastic i think that flips over the edge of the uh, ac 300. Mm -hmm. um got one more question sitting here um is there a uh green or red LED like the Edge 5 indicating run status? There is, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, you can, uh, the LED still still works. Uh, those are some of the features that got transferred over. Uh, so yeah, you can just look at it and, uh, uh, you know, green, green, amber, red uh, is the sequence, yes. Awesome. Um, at the moment, um, that is all the questions that I have here. Um, I'll, I'll say a few closing remarks and if any other questions come in um, in that time, great. Um, but first of all, I, I, as always, Jason and Comey, thank you guys for this helpful presentation. Um, you know, we really tried to work hard to find out to bring the advantages to why those who would be using them would care and hopefully that's the takeaway that everybody got um, if anybody has any specific questions um, or need any additional information my information is on the screen right now um, my phone my phone number actually i'll give you uh my personal phone number is 630-757-1755 um, my email is correct there, rickd at lessman.com. Um, in addition, if um, anybody would like to know more about other technologies that we support, all of our webinars that we've done for all the years are posted both on our website at lessman.com or kelly.com um, and on our Lessman Instrument Company YouTube channel. So you can go back and see this or any other of our informative webinars we have and if there are additional topics that you'd like us to cover in our webinars please just send me an email with the you know uh, with the subject that you'd like covered we're fortunate that we have a um, access to a lot of different products and product specialists um, so if you can let me know what you'd like to see covered we can um, certainly address that um, I'll take one more look. At this point, I don't see any further questions. Um, so again, Jason Comey, thank you. And I will uh, close it and um, hopefully hear questions if there are any. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you to all that attended today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.